How big are you thinking? How, how much money do you want to make? A year? Yeah. 500k, 500k. In your rise up, do you think there's going to be problems? Of course. Because it's going to have you doubt whether or not you want 500,000. But you want 500k a year. Guess what comes with the territory? Dealing with problems. There's the balance. Guess what? None. When you are explaining why you're in business, no matter if somebody's in healthcare, whether somebody's a lawyer, whether somebody's in the military, if somebody's in, in owns a restaurant, it's usually centered around over this financial hump. The mindset I have when building a company, and I hope that it continues to manifest. How do I make sure to manifest? I stay consistent. You're from healthcare, why are you doing it? Why, why are you an entrepreneur? You're coming from the healthcare field. Why have you decided to become an entrepreneur? It's about uh, on my financial side. The financial side? Yeah, I have student loan. Got it. Yeah. St student loan? And um, for me, my a nine to five job, it's, it's good enough to solve the student loan. It's right. It's not really. So the nine to five job is not sufficient enough to pay for your life, your bills, as well as this massive student loan debt. How much of that scenario had to deal with healthcare? Exactly. So all you're doing when you are explaining why you're in business, no matter if somebody's in healthcare, whether somebody's a lawyer, whether somebody's in the military, or somebody's in, in owns a restaurant, it's usually centered around over this financial hump. And so most people find themselves in position. There, there's a guy in there today that uh, has multiple college degrees and none of them, even with his job, none of those degrees with the job that he's making that. And he, the reason why he got those degrees is because hopefully he would be more marketable to get paid more money. What he found out, the market is still unwilling to pay him more money for that degree in that, in that field that he wants to work in, even with mo multiple degrees. So he's got a couple options. He's either A, he gets two jobs, or, or B, starts a side business. So the benefit of, <clears throat> the benefit of starting, uh, starting a side business is that a whole other area of the tax law opens up to him in addition to the income opportunity of having a side business. Because at a job, somebody has, a, has their gross pay <clears throat> and the first thing that gets taken out of the paycheck, right, is taxes. But now that he's, and, and what happens if he gets a second job? The same scenario. And it's still with the second job, what happens if he stops the second job? Does that second job still pay him an income? No, because he still has to work it. So he's adding more hours to try to get more money. His move tonight is like, you know what, this makes sense because if I get a side business and I'm actually able to build a business using a system and a process, not only in the meantime am I able to enjoy those tax deductions of being an entrepreneur. You don't have to be an entrepreneur on a full-time basis. I think the IRS says as long as you're growing a trade or business, you can then take advantage of certain tax deductions of being an entrepreneur. Things you can write off furniture, car, uh, laptops, cell phones, right? Miles that you drive in your car. You can write off those deductions. You have a home office. You can write off those things that normally is an expense, but now is an expense through a business or a trade is now tax deductible. The mindset I have when building a company, and I hope that it continues to manifest. How do I make sure to manifest? I stay consistent. Why, why do most people right now failing on their New Year's resolutions? Because they fail to do both. Be consistent. Exactly. By the, by the time they went to the gym, worked that upper body, lower body, the third workout, everything sore, they don't stay consistent in their diet. They don't consistent in their mindset of becoming better that all the reasons why they want to get in shape for 2020 went out the window when they felt pain. Mm. That's where most people quit. And then they wonder why they're not in physical shape. <laughs> why their health isn't any better. Because they're willing to push through the pain. Because they're not willing to push through the pain. Same thing too but, but, with, with entrepreneurship because it's all mental and financial. When push comes to shove, when you're down in the dumps, you're, you're lacking financial resources, you're lacking mental resources, how do you push through that? How do you process that? That there, is your make it or break it point. That point right there is going to define you, is going to reveal your character. How many times have I been enticed to do mortgages? How many times have I been enticed to do real estate investing? I just don't look at it.
Why? Because it's sensitive to the interest rate environment. So if I'm in real estate, buying, selling, buying, selling, my livelihood is predicated, A, on variables I don't have very little guidance over, control over. I have zero guidance and control over somebody's credit score. I have zero guidance on whether or not a bank is going to approve a specific client. I have very little guidance whether or not the inspection comes back with something that comes up in the house that the client doesn't want the house anymore. I have very little control over the buyer. I have very little control over the seller. I have very little control over the economy, which, may, which might potentially devalue the, the property at a moment that I need to pay my bills. I, I have very little control over a bank that can care less, care less about my bills, whether or not they fund the property, they, they allow the client to get the loan to get the property for me to sell. Same thing on the mortgage side of things. In my observation during three different recessions during the 2000s, which is, which is considered the lost generation, the, the, the forgotten decade, I've seen people in real estate and mortgages scatter once the recession hits. Here's what, and here's why I've not seen scatter. Who's, who, who I've seen actually deepen and build the practices and businesses during those, it's insurance. insurance. It's been the most crazy phenomenon. We're 128 months into an economic expansion which started June of 2009. Consecutive expansion. Do you think, it's the biggest one, right? It's the biggest economic expansion. When do you think it's gonna stop? Do you think between now and Trump's re-election it's going to stop? Probably not. So we've got another 18 months, 24 months probably, for this ex economic expansion to potentially in increase and expand. Think about this real quick. How big are you thinking? How, how much money do you want to make? A year? Yeah. 500k, 500k. In your rise up, do you think there's going to be problems? Of course. That's going to have you doubt whether or not you want 500,000. But you want 500K a year. Guess what comes with the territory? Problems. Dealing with problems. There's the balance. Guess what? None. You just handle it as they come, just like if you raise your family. You said, oh, wait, wait, I just had another kid. Uh, can't bounce. Go back inside. <laughs> Put him back in. Wait, give me another nine months. I'm not ready because I have no balance. No, bro. You just, you just took on that pride of being another dad. I'll find a way to make it work. When I found out that I was gonna have twins, bro, my ride home, I'm bawling. Not because of joy. <laughs> because at that point, my business ain't taken off yet, man. I'm like, how the hell am I gonna do this? I'm barely, I'm barely stringing it right now with, with my son. I got two on the way, three? <laughs> and I remember telling myself, I looked at someone in the rear view mirror, you better get your shit together, man. Yes. I look at myself in the rear, get your freaking shit together. There's no joke right now. Nine months are gonna be here, what are you gonna do? Get your shit together. What did I ask for, balance? No, bro, this is part of the territory. I'm a dad of three kids. Either I want it or I got defaulted into it. So I didn't want it. I got defaulted into it. I got to handle it, why? Because of my actions. Same thing too with Sheena when, when she became a single mom. You know, balance, I got, a, I got a, it's part of the territory. I decided to do in my life, it's something in my life that caused me to get pregnant. I got to deal with it now. I got I, I to deal with raising a, a boy. Between my wife and I, it's going, if this is our, between the two of us, we have four kids. Jordan is the one we actually planned. Now, in the, in the process, are we looking for balance? No, there is no balance. <laughs> right, right. What do we do to manage being parents? Nanny, engage the help of grandma, grandpa, right? So we gotta do to get them involved. We have expenses for the nanny, expenses for retiring our, my in-laws, or Sheena's parents, and also expenses for retiring my parents. Are we, in, are we, in a financial capacity to do that. Yes, woo! Guess what we got? Balance. But I didn't ask for it, we just made it happen. Because we want this. Because if I don't learn how to deal with those consequences, then I have to take this down here. And there you go, it's easier now. There's balance. But I forego this. So what do I want? 
Do I want balance or, or, or be driven by my guilt or be driven by my dreams? I say, hey kids, listen, you, family, you come out along for, do you think my mom regrets me working her when she goes out to Israel? This Sunday, we're about to baptize our son. With what, with what water? From the water my mother got from the River Jordan, the Jordan River in Israel. Because she took a bottle of water like that. We're baptizing a son here. Not, not Chicago tap water. <laughs> that we, uh, uh, holy water. Bro, we got holy water. Holy, holy water, right. <laughs> oh, man.